Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be not really making a start on my review of Host by Peter James, because I've literally opened it and read the introduction. I haven't even read the prologue yet. Um, but yes, I will be reviewing this over the coming days. There will be tabs. I will share my thoughts along the way. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to read you the blurb, so I feel like I've achieved something. Dane reads... Brilliant scientist Joe Messenger believes that people can be made to live forever, knowing the human body can be frozen indefinitely. Joe devises a way of downloading the human brain into a supercomputer called Archive, but his wife is worried by his preoccupation with Archive, which seems to be developing signs of a distinct and sinister personality of its own. Then, just as Joe is on the brink of a scientific breakthrough, a series of macabre accidents befall him and his family, and Joe finds himself facing the terrifying consequences of his own obsessions. So, 600 pages tiny print wish me luck so we get this little line which is sort of very foreboding she instructed herself that no computer could ever be aware of its own existence have emotions fall in love watch two adult human beings living their lives and begin to make any sense of what that was all about could it and we learn that Joe, when he was at university, he was considered a crazy postdoc boffin who reckoned he knew how to make computers have orgasms. And we get this little bit, which I thought was interesting, uh, especially the last sentence here. Spring would be coming in a couple of months, he thought, then summer, then fall. The eternal life cycle. You were born, you lived, you died. That was what we were taught, what we believed, what we knew. Hatch, match and dispatch. And so we learn the differences between hardware and wetware. And I don't think I've heard the term wetware before. Unlike Joe, who was a hardware scientist with his faith in post-biological man, Blake Hewlett was a wetware scientist who believed the key to immortality lay in the preservation of the human biological body. Mmm, wetware. We get a reference to the Turing test. Uh, so the computer explains this actually, archive. It says, The Turing test was established by the late Professor Alan Turing, who cracked the Enigma code during World War II. It requires a computer to fool a panel of ten people in into thinking a terminal is being operated by a human being rather than a computer. But I'm not sure whether we've cracked it now. I have a feeling that a few things have passed the Turing test. And that was said to be the true test of artificial intelligence. Also, when a website makes you fill out a capture, that stands for a completely automated private Turing test or something. Can't remember the exactness. Interesting here, especially considering this was early 90s and obviously this is more relevant today. The whole weather pattern of the planet seemed kind of sick these days. There was a big piece in the National Enquirer last week about the planet's last days. The planet was dying, yet there were folks on it that wanted to live forever. Maybe so they could be there when it did finally die. And we learn a little bit more about Joe when he was younger. Joe had been far more interested in the, in the mechanics of sex than in relationships. He'd used his girlfriends to help him with his research into consciousness by wiring them up with electrodes before sex to monitor their peaks and troughs to make comparisons between oral sex, vaginal sex, anal sex and masturbation. At first, under his persuasive influence, most of them found the experiments kinkly erotic. But after a while, they'd got disillusioned when they realised that his interest in them did not extend beyond the laboratory of his bedroom. Well, yes, yeah, so we get this weird bit where the scientist thinks that 100 million megabytes is 10 million gigabytes, which just isn't true. And then this kind of dates it, um, talking about if you were computerized. Um, you can have orgasms lasting for days. Human, orgasm, human orgasms have a natural biological way of ending, often do quickly. You wouldn't have that problem with a computer. It would be paradise. And if you wanted to go on holiday, you wouldn't have to mess around with luggage in airports. You could just send yourself down the phone lines anywhere you wanted to go. She laughed. And you wouldn't have to worry about postcards. You could just send faxes saying, wish you were here. Why don't you fax yourselves out and join us? I mean, this was written at a time when email was a thing, so I, I don't know why they went with faxes there. And one of the scientists, Blake, goes, you know what's gonna happen the first time any human being builds a machine that's smarter than man? The first thing it's gonna do, it's gonna say, what the hell do I need man for anymore? He just messes up this planet. I can do a far better job without him. Which is basically the plot of every AI-based sci-fi horror novel, isn't it? Then he has an argument, Joe has an argument with his wife, and she goes, if you don't think we have much of a sex life, why don't you go and sleep with your bloody computer? In a few years' time, I'll probably be able to. Immediately he had made the remark, Joe regretted his facetiousness. I do like the word facetiousness, but that was not a clever thing to say to his wife. We get this great little line. Human remains are normally shipped by air. The last body I heard of being shipped by boat was Count Dracula's. Some information on file sizes, although because of the, um blunder earlier with the conversion rate. I'm not entirely convinced by this, but a byte equated roughly to a letter of the alphabet. A page of A4 type double space took up roughly two kilobytes. The Bible used up one and a half megabytes. A terabyte could contain all of the information in 700,000 Bibles. Yeah, but you, he thinks that a gigabyte is 10 megabytes. 
and then the sun goes missing and he turns up inside the freezer. <laughs> There's also a great scene earlier on where somebody's head is deep frozen in liquid nitrogen and then it gets thrown and it explodes. Sorry, I was getting confused. I can hear my cat downstairs. He's eating some plastic. Uh, we get a reference to uh, the character reading an anthology of Margaret Atwood stories, which I thought was cool because I just read some Margaret Atwood before getting to this. Somebody um, watches somebody else smilingly, which annoyed me because I hate unnecessary uh, adverbs. And then they ask, how close are you to enabling a computer to have an orgasm? Joe was shocked now. Actually, he suspected that if a computer had an orgasm, it would never want to stop. But he wasn't going to tell her that. Uh, we get a reference to needing to get hold of someone called Nicholas Greensword. Green is in colour, sword is in weapon, all one word. Um, and I have a character in the book I'm editing at the moment, um, Boys in Blue, which is like fold book number four in my sort of cosy mystery series. And their name is Sword Rock. Um, and that's because they're, I sort of stole it from somebody I know whose surname is uh, Gunstone. And then Karen is reading a Margaret Atwood novel, which is interesting because it was an anthology of stories before. So I, I assume she's got onto her next book, you know. Uh, and there's a password, 2059. Archive had once worked that date out based on an input of all developments of medical technology since Aristotle. 2059, the year by which all known terminal illnesses would be curable. I don't think we're making good progress towards that. I mean, we're closer to 2059 now than, they, than we are to when this book was written, and I don't think we've made much progress at all, really. Great little philosophical line here. Were we smart enough yet to create a worthwhile future in which people live forever? Or would we create a hell on earth from which there was no escape? And then we have a little bit of a twist ending. I mean, there are lots of twists and turns along the way throughout this. A lot of blood and gore as well. Um, a lot of bad luck befalling on protagonist Joe Messenger and his family. But I don't want to spoil all of that. And I don't want to reveal whether he is successful or not in his quest to create immortality. Overall though, I think Host, it's a decent enough book. It is pretty long, especially with this small print. Um, but stick with it, you know? And I, I think it's one of those books where it's mostly interesting, to be honest, because of the questions that it asks of the reader. Um, and it's kind of, I, I guess, like up to you to determine how you would respond to those, you know? Um, but yeah, I enjoyed Host by Peter James. I give it like a 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of Host by Peter James. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.